lovely Floss Tube friends, welcome back to the channel. A very warm welcome to you all. This video is slightly different. I've been reflecting. I've been reflecting back on my time of stitching from the very, very beginning. Yep. I even had to go back to some of the beginning videos that I ever created and remind myself just, just how much I didn't know and, and how much I've learned now. But the biggest question that I've asked myself from day one until just recently is the unspoken topic of the floss storage dilemma. Yes, it's time that I talk about floss storage. I've had so many comments and questions on this channel regarding floss storage, which ones I use, which ones I thought were best. But in all fairness and in all truth, it's very dependent on how we stitch, what we stitch, what threads we use. I've asked myself the same questions. What one should I use? Which one is best for me and my stitching? Do I want or do I need to have more than one storage system? And then how do I organize them all? So today I wanted to share with you my thoughts and views on floss storage. What ones I've decided on and why? Which ones don't and didn't work for me? And why I now have another floss storage system that I'm beginning to put in place. So we have to go back to the beginning, the very, very beginning. I even went back to the beginning, so far back to the beginning that I even viewed some of my very, very first floss tube videos, which, yep, that's not something I want to revisit. But it does go to show you how very little I knew when I very first started. So of course, the first place that I've researched is Google and floss tube. And in that community back in the day, the most advertised, I'm not going to say it was the most popular, but the most advertised floss storage system was bobbins, bobbinating and bobbin boxes. So of course I went straight into bobbinating. Now the method to the madness for me was that I didn't know for sure that I was going to be stitching indefinitely. You know, I, I didn't know for sure that it wasn't just going to be a whim hobby. One of those hobbies where you do it for six months and then be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm bored of that now and then move on to something new. As I was totally new to all this, didn't know for sure that I was going to continue doing it and the fact that I live in a very quaint, small little British house. Storage needed to be small. It needed to be contained and it certainly wasn't like I had loads and loads of space where I could put all the things. So for me, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, well, it's a bobbin box. It's a bobbin box with the bobbins in it. You know, that's, that doesn't take up a lot of space. So because I decided that that was the route to go. On top of which, when I was looking at it and the way it was sort of, you know, it was talked about on floss tube was it was, you know, it was just easier because, you know, all the bobbins were in a bobbin box in one place. They all had the numbers on. You just open the bobbin box and there they are. You know, the bobbins, all in number order, all numbered, very, very easy to see. And you can just quickly pick out the thread that you want and off you go. Because I was new at it, even though I knew that there were people that had you know, a full set of DMCs, you know, I just started. And although I was doing full coverage, as far as I was concerned, the skeins that I was buying were the skeins that I would use for the full project. So it wasn't long before after the first project had started, I decided actually I wanted to start another one because one wasn't enough for me apparently. So then of course, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, that does mean that I need to go and get more floss and it's another box. But again, I was sitting there thinking, well, it's okay, it's just another little box. And all the threads for the project are in that box. Because by this point, I've realized that actually there's more than one box and that I would need somewhere to put the threads when I finish with them. So I went and purchased an IKEA drawer unit and then I got some foam core and placed up runners in it that were just wide enough to put the bobbins in. So then at least that way, when I was finished working on a project, I could put them all into the drawer. And then as and when I decided I was going to start another project and kit a project up, I would pull from the drawer and then I would buy any additional skeins that I needed. So this system to me made total sense. I was like, of course, of course, this system's super easy. Yeah, until I got to the downsides of this system. So the more projects I started, the more boxes I needed. So when I've just gone from actually, I just need a cupboard that's got, you know, a small amount of space on a shelf just for my one box. I've gone from one box to two box, to three boxes, 
need I say anymore? Being that I'm the sort of person that I like to be fairly organized, one of the other downsides that became very apparent very quickly, once I'd got more than two projects on the go, everyone was talking about project bags, you know, and you do. As soon as you start your first project, you have a project bag, you have your project in it, you have your chart in it. But then that's where the problem came in, is that the bobbin boxes that I needed for my 90 plus skeins for my full coverage wouldn't fit in the project bags. So now I've got to find storage for the project in the project bag, as well as the bobbin boxes. Every time I decided I wanted to start a new project, I would kit it up fully. So whatever color it required, I would just go and order another skein of that color. Little did I know that most full coverages that you kit up will ever use a full skein of the floss. When I'm now, say, on project three or four, I've gone and bought more of the same colors because they're in all of the projects without really realizing that, you know, if you check the, the stitch count of that color off of the key chart, you will see that actually you could have just sort of used half of the skein off of the one that you previously bought. So inadvertently, I'm sitting there thinking this is a cost-effective, easy storage solution. I'm now actually spending more money on more threads than I actually needed to spend on the full coverages that only had maybe 100 stitches in that one color. Yet I've got a full skein of that sitting on a bobbin. And then when I've gone to kit another project up, it's got exactly the same color in it. And guess what? Yeah. I went and bought another skein because I'm stupid. <laughs> Let's be honest. When I very first started, you know, going and buying all these skeins and I'd, you know, end up between 90 and 100 odd skeins, turn up in the post ready for my project. I was super excited. I had my bobbins at the ready. I had my skeins at the ready. I had my little permanent marker at the ready. And I would sit there and bobinate, yeah. of course, at first. I'm no different to anyone else. I found it very therapeutic very therapeutic, sitting there winding my bobbins on. It was wonderful until I got to about project two or three. And then I'm like, now this is getting a little tiresome now. One of the other downsides to bobbinated threads for me was that when I then found the color that I wanted in my bobbin box <clears throat> and I would take, you know, the length of strand that I wanted and cut it and I'd use one, one strand. The other part, I would then wrap the opposite way around on the bobbin so that I knew that that was, that was already a pre-cut sort of section ready to pull next time. And I'd pop it back in the bobbin box, which was totally fine for the first one or two. This thread that's been pre-cut, that's been wrapped around it the other way. Before you know it, my bobbin box turned into a total hot mess. And every single time I tried to pull the color I wanted, I would get sort of two or three or four because they would all get tangled up with each other, which I found really frustrating. And then at the end of the project, you know, it took me a long time to work all of this out because you need to end the projects and full coverages are not something that finish fast or quickly, not when I'm stitching them. So when I got to the end of the project and I was like, right, okay, now I need to put all of these bobbins into my, my drawers that I've now created in my IKEA unit. So I'm sitting there putting them all in number order and putting them back into the drawer, the IKEA drawer. And it was only then that it became very apparent that actually I've got more thread of the same color than I, than I needed because it slowly but surely accumulated. I mean, I never had stash. And then all of a sudden my stash started to accumulate. And instead of accumulating in the right way where I had, you know, one of every color, it accumulated to the point that I had, you know, two or three bobbins of the same color because I was overspending. I was buying far too much of the same color when I was barely actually using it on that project that I've purchased a whole skein for. So needless to say, it now is taking up yet more of my precious space. I now need more storage and I was spending more money than I needed to. So with all that in mind, after a certain amount of time, it became very apparent that I was really loving this stitch and stuff. I was really loving it. And I was all very into my full coverage and I really only touched full coverage. But with those bugbears that I've just said about the bobbinating and the bobbin boxes, I was like, mm, everything seems to take so long just to get a, a project ready. That's before I've even stitched on it. And then when I start stitching on it, there's the frustration of, you know, bobbins all coming out of the bobbin boxes and everything's getting tangled with everything and having more colors than I really needed to have. So I started looking around for an alternative. And of course, one of the game changers and still is a game changer to this day was the Paco thread organizer. 
It was super easy. No more bobinating. I would print out an extra copy of the symbols off the chart on my PDF and then I would prick stick onto the card all of the symbols and then slide it back into the Paco thread organizer, cut my threads to length and just put them on. There was no more kinks in my threads. The Paco thread organizer is still something that I use on a number of my full coverage pieces and it's still very much a player and game changer when it comes to actually doing my full coverages. The Paco thread organizer holds 50 colors and I only needed two of them for most or almost all of the projects that I have because none of my projects were over a hundred colors. Even though I'm sitting here telling you it's a game changer and the Paco thread organizer is still a system that I still use and I still love it because I do, there are some downsides for some people. So personally, if you just leave all of the threads hanging on a Paco thread organizer, it can get a little ratty and a little messy. So you do need to sort of gently braid the threads together just to stop them from turning into a bit of a hot mess when they're hanging. I personally didn't hang mine. I used to just have them on the side next to me and I would just pull the color that I needed. But with all the pulling, slowly but surely over time, they would all sort of become slightly tangled and a little bit messy. So for me, I would have to gently braid them together so that it just made it so that they would slide out nicely with that sort of tangling up with all the other colors. Also, the Paco thread organizer had the same problem as I did, as I did with the bobbins. And that is that the Paco thread organizers didn't fit in the project bag with the project and the chart. I wouldn't say that my project bags were overly small because they weren't. They would hold A4 and above. But with the chart and the project, there just wasn't room to get two Paco thread organizers in there with it. So again, I'm now needing to find somewhere else to store the Paco thread organizer with all the threads on separately to the actual project. This is where it becomes laughable. And most of you will just be like, hadn't even thought about this. So because I'm, I'm sitting there telling myself that the Paco thread organizer is a total game changer. And to a point it is. And I, like I say, I still use it. However, it never dawned on me that when I got to the end of a project that was on a Paco thread organizer, all of those lovely pre-cut threads that I now have, I had to do something with them because my storage system was all bobbinated. So yep, guess what I did? Stupid Teresa. I then, at the end of a project, had to look at the symbol, look at the chart, find the colour, go to the drawer, see if I already had a bobbin that had that colour on it, which most of the time I did by this point. And then I had to sit there and wind it onto a bobbin so that I had somewhere to store it rather than just sort of, you know, throw them all in the bin. So I've now gone from a hanging system back to bobbinating. And basically I was sitting there bobbinating just for storage. What a waste of my time. <laughs> that was never going to work and it was never going to work for me. So I suffered. I suffered that. You know, I thought, well, you know, I don't know another way. There isn't another way to do this. However, by about this point in my stitching journey, I was starting to want to stitch all the things. So, you know, it wasn't just about full coverages anymore. It was about stitching other projects. Of course, the minute you step away from just stitching full coverage and you start going to smalls and, and other projects, of course, there comes the next rabbit hole, which of course is there's different brands. And there's different threads. And, you know, before you know it, you're, you're delving down to, you know, classic colour works. You're, you know, weeks dye works. You're looking at silk threads. You're looking at, <laughs> need I say any more? The list goes on. So at this point, it's become very apparent that my, my storage system is not going to work because that's DMC. And now I've got all these new different threads and they're all different brands. So now I'm sitting here thinking to myself, well, what do I do about brands, different brands? You know, I've got, I've got my setup. I've got bobinated DMCs. What, you know, what do I do with the next lot of stuff? So at that point, after, again, more floss tube research, there was lots of talk of floss away bags. You know, and everyone was saying, oh, yeah, well, I just put my floss in a floss away bag. And I was like, oh, what a fabulous idea. So, Chris, here comes that next rabbit hole. I decided to myself, well, okay, I'm not prepared to do anything about my DMC. My DMC is just going to stay on bobbins and it's going to stay in the Ikea drawer. But my other threads, oh, hello, here's another, you know, he, here's another, another choice, an, another storage system. So here I am now, trialing out the floss away bags. 
and I decided that I would use the floss away bags for anything that was not DMC. So that didn't matter whether it was a silk, it didn't matter whether it was a variegated thread or it was a different brand, so it was a Weeks Dye Works or it was a Dinky Dyes or it was, you know, whatever it was. So I then decided that I was gonna try all the floss away bags. So again, here we go with yet more storage requirements. So now, how am I gonna store my floss away bags? Everyone that I saw put them in some sort of box. So me being me, at first I tried photo boxes, but they were never really long enough for me and for all of the floss away bags. So I ended up actually purchasing fridge containers, like plastic clear containers, and the floss away bags fitted lovely in those. However, they again take up more storage and you can't stack one on top of the other. But I decided, you know, that that was what I was gonna do. So I did that and before I know it, my stash of other threads and other brands and silk threads grew and grew and grew. So before I know it, here I am with a number of these fridge containers with all the floss away bags in. And again, I'm needing to find somewhere to store them. So then when I was sort of sitting there thinking, oh, you know, that was such a great idea, Teresa, you know, it was the best decision that you could have made. This is where I started realizing some of the downsides to the floss away bag system. So as I'm, a lover of making sure that I fully kit a project and have it at the ready. But the problem came in for most of the projects that I was working on didn't just call for one brand. So it wasn't like all DMC or all say classic color works or all dinky dyes or all. There was like, there was a selection of DMCs and a selection of other things as well. So then I decided, well, how's that gonna work? So I decided to go and get some rings. I'd seen other people saying about the rings, so I got rings and I thought, okay, I'll put, I'll put them all on the rings for the project and, and kit it. Well, the problem was to try and put bobbins on a ring, you can't fit very many on because they're actually really quite, I mean, they might be short and small, but they can get quite bulky. But then to have the floss away bags with the other threads in on there as well, it was really awkward to work with the ring because now I've got some bobbins on there and I've got floss away bags on there. The other thing that I wasn't 100% on with the floss away bags was the fact that to put the number on them, I needed to put the number, there, there's like a, a white section on the floss away bag where you write the number on in the middle of the bag. So it wasn't very visually easy to just look at the floss away bags and be able to see what color or what brand of thread it was. You had to actually like flick them or look through them to find the right color. So again, it's time consuming. It's time consuming of, of sitting there just trying to look for the colour that I wanted to stitch next rather than actually just grabbing and stitching with that colour. Sealing and unsealing the bags, I was quite lazy with that also. So before I knew it, there were occasions when I didn't seal the bags properly and don't even ask me how. There was actually floss that would become tufting out and then and it would fall out and then I wouldn't know which bag it was supposed to be in. And yeah, it, it could just turn into a hot mess because once you've sort of cut your lengths and then you stuff the rest of it back in, although I was stuffing it back in, some of it never actually all went in. So by now, you know, I've been stitching for some time. Um, I've got a lot of different brands. I've now got a number of dis different systems that I'm using to, to store the threads. None of them were really floating my boat, so to speak. You know, I, di I didn't like it any of them really, it, it, they just weren't working for my style of stitching. So then that was when the game changer Annie's Keepers came into play and it was my new game changer. Once I, once I got my hands on them and I started using them, I'm like, what have I been doing all these years? This was something totally new and a whole new world to me. It, it changed everything. It changed how I do things. It changed how I view my floss storage. There was no requirement to do any bobbinating. I literally just had to unwind the skein, cut it and put it on an Annie's Keeper. Number it, job done. And for me, although the boxes can be a bit tricky to find here in the UK, I have an IKEA drawer unit and the project store rails fit perfectly in that. So for me, it, it was just win-win. You could easily pull the threads. You know, you just had to have a quick look, roll, you know, run through the rails, like you would a filing system, for instance. And it was very, very easy to see the colors that I needed. When I decided that I was gonna do a small project, I could just pull them off, put them on a ring. Lots of them will fit on a fairly good size ring. 
but most smaller projects don't you don't need a giant ring for that so again very very easy to just find the colors pull the colors and put them on a ring and then they will fit in the project bag with the project and the chart hooray at last i found a system that works so that storage just got reduced no more bobinating or kinks in my threads no more boxes where i needed to store the threads and then you know have the project and something else some somewhere else everything was together exactly how I like it so when I pull the project bag I've got the threads I've got the project and I've got the chart and to this day I still totally love my Annie's Keeper system totally totally love it everything that I'm talking about really has to I have to tell you what for me has been a pro and what for me has been a con so there are some downsides to have been switching over to the Annie's Keeper system. The biggest one, and it really is more relating to the people in the UK or anywhere other than the States, and that is the storage. So the box size that you need for the Annie's Keepers is, is very driven by US sizes. So here in the UK, we can't use our standard, our standard boxes, our, you know, the boxes that you would normally put sort of your your filing systems into they don't fit the annie's keeper storage rails that have the little hooks on so that you can run them on it's not impossible to find the boxes that we need but most of the time it's much more expensive or you have to get them shipped over from the states to get them to fit because full scap doesn't appear to work and neither does a4 and they're the two main brands. Most box brands that we have here in the UK will either be full scap or A4. Neither of those fit exactly right. There are some boxes out there that do work, but to actually find them is a task all unto itself. The only other criticism, I wouldn't even call it a criticism, the only other con that I have found with the Annie's Keepers is the hole can be a little on the small side. So once you've actually got one full skein of DMC, onto the Annie's Keeper. If you then wanted to say, put another skein on there, it could get a bit tight. You know, you can only really get away with having one skein on there. But the biggest thing for me, or the biggest con for me was, I'd already been stitching so long that I had a full DMC set all bobbinated. And the thought of trying to go through all of those bobbins and unbobinate them and then I don't know iron them to straighten out the kinks and then load them onto the Annie's keepers was just not something I was prepared to do I would, there was no way I was going to do that so for me that was a no-go if if you've already got a, a full DMC set that's bobinated I am I, I decided it in my mind that I would go to the bobinated skeins first and use them up until they're completed and then I would switch over to the Annie's Keepers. But again, I just shot myself in the foot because at that point I've now got Annie's Keepers that are all like a hanging system, which was easy to find and easy to get to. But then I've also got colours that are going to be bobbinated. So then trying to kit up projects using bobbins and Annie's Keepers, one being a bobbinated version and all very, very tidy on a bobbin versus an Annie's Keeper, which is a hanging system, the two just don't work well together not unless I'm prepared to sit here and painstakingly unbobinate everything, iron everything and hang it onto Annie's keepers, which, you know, if all I was worried about was bobinating, <laughs> the thought of reversing it and trying to turn it from bobinated to a hanging system. Oh no, that just breaks me out in a sweat thinking about it. So I know what you're saying to yourself. Now, why would I want or need yet another storage system? Well, the fact of the matter is, I've been stitching so long now that I think it's very apparent that this isn't a, this isn't a hobby that's just going to sort of, you know, one day I'll go like, oh no, I don't want to do stitching anymore. You know, so for me, the full DMC set of threads was an absolute must because I'm very impatient. If I decide I want to stitch on something and it calls for DMCs, I want to know that I've got, I've got the colour here. I don't, I don't want to have to wait and purchase it and wait for it to be delivered because I can't just stop at an LNS and pick a skein up. We don't really have those anywhere where I live. So everything, you, you solely rely on online purchasing. And like I say, most projects, and that it's not just relating to full coverage, it also relates to all other projects. Very rarely do you need a full skein of a colour. So I wanted a system 
where I could easily just sort of, you know, take half of the skein rather than a whole skein, but have it all in situ. So I can just pull a certain amount of it from my stash rather than go on another purchasing spree and buy yet another skein of the same color. I also decided that I wanted something that would work well with the hanging system that I've already got in place. Because I have got a lot of stuff on the hanging system. Admittedly, I've still got a lot on the bobbins, which I am painstakingly trying to sort of use up where I can. But predominantly, I do tend to lean more to the hanging system. So I want to be able to have a system where if I've got another system running alongside the Annie's Keeper system, I want it so that it does the same thing. I want it to hang. I don't want to end up in the same situation I had with the Annie's Keepers and the bobbinated bobbins or the Paco thread organizer and the bobbinated bobbins. It needs to either be bobbinated or hanging. I've decided that hanging is the way forwards for me. And now I have the CXC threads that I like to play with. I don't want to accidentally mix up the CXC threads and the DMCs. Now, I know a lot of people have said, they're, they're very alike they may be very alike but I don't want to end up with color variants where one is a DMC and one is a CXC so my full set of CXC threads that I'm planning to now get need to be kept separately to my DMCs now obviously if I had the same system for them it could be rather tricky when I've pulled from say I've pulled my resources from, from one place and then at the end of a project, which for me can be years later, I'm not going to remember were they CXC threads or were they DMC threads. So I need to keep a very clear line between DMC and CXC and then another clear line between DMC, CXC and specialty threads. Now when I say specialty threads, that's basically anything that isn't a DMC or a CXC thread. So what is this system? I'm talking about I hear you say <laughs> so this new system is the floss chip system it is by pip and chip in the UK and it is fabulous I have to say I have been blown away by it it is amazing and it is a deal breaker you know it's one thing being a game changer but there was another thing when it was going to be a deal breaker so the beauty of the floss chips for me are that the boxes are very easy to get hold of. They are IKEA boxes. There are two different variations of IKEA boxes that you can purchase for this system. For the full set, you just need the four boxes. The boxes just so happen to be IKEA boxes, which also just so happen to fit into my IKEA shelving unit, which again, makes total sense. I already had the shelving unit. I already had other boxes in there, which were basically storing boxes of more boxes which were storing more boxes <laughs> so to be able to do away with all of these boxes and just have one box with yet another hanging system in was a perfect perfect idea for me and it's using the shelving system that I already had in place what more could a girl ask for for the IKEA boxes their website will tell you what those IKEA boxes are and which sizes to get the inserts that pip and chip supply with the with the floss chips are very, very, very easy to put into the boxes. It is super, super easy, great instructions, very easy to follow. They do do two different types. They do the floss chips and the floss bobbins. I've gone with the floss chips because the floss chips, again, are a hanging system, which will pair and work extremely well for me with my Annie's Keepers and my Paco Thread Organizers. They do do floss bobbins, for those people that do still like to do the bobbinating, which will, again, it sits in the box exactly as, exactly the same as the floss chips do. The only difference is, is one is bobbinated and one is a hanging system. The game changer to this is not only is this a perfect system that was gonna work with my Annie's Keepers and Paco Thread Organizers, but each one of the floss chips or bobbins comes color-coded. That's right. It's already got a color-coded sticker on it, with the number for the DMC. It was just like, oh, you just need to find the color you're gonna use, find the corresponding bobbin chip and load your thread. It is great to be able to see it and look at the boxes and actually see the colors and the numbers very, very clearly. It's so easy to just sort of dip your hand in and quickly grab the one that you want. The holes that are provided in the floss chips, I've found will hold 
two full skeins of DMC really quite comfortably. So and the floss chips not only have a large hole for the actual main threads to go through, but it also has a little hole to the side, which is great if you're really quite frugal with your thread, you know, and you only use half of a length. You want to keep that other half of length. There's a little place on the actual floss chip for you to sort of put it so that you can come back to it and use it later. So the floss chips is now my my new storage system for my DMC threads. And I can take some thread as and when I need it from it. I don't need to take the full skein. The beauty of this is because it works so well with my Annie's Keepers. So my Annie's Keepers I will use for when I'm actually stitching on a project because they're so small and easy to use on my projects, whether it be full coverage or a smaller project because I can get a lot of them, the Annie's Keepers on a ring or on a project bar. I will just go to the floss chip system as my main storage system. So that's my main DMC storage area. I will take half of a half of a skein, put it onto the Annie's Keeper for, to work on the project. Because they're both hanging systems, I can then just bring it straight back to my storage and thread it back onto the floss chip. So nothing goes to waste. Everything is hanging. It works also for the Paco thread organizers. So for the full coverages where I decide I'm going to use a Paco thread organizer, again, I can just take half of the skein, put it onto my Paco thread organizer, and then at the end of the project, it can all go back into the floss chips. It is, you know, when you just have that moment of like, of peace, it's like, you know, oh, what am I going to do when? Now that's all gone. What am I going to do when the project finishes is not a concern anymore. It is now, that's fine. Cause I'll just, you know, I'll just put it back into its little storage. It's totally fine. The other thing that I really like about this floss chip system is just at a glance, when you're actually looking through the colors in the box, you can see very, very clearly where you're starting to run low on thread. None of the other systems have been that clear about when I'm starting to run low on, the, on a certain color. This is so easy to see when there's one that is getting, you know, very thin. And before it's actually run out, it gives me the opportunity to just sort of place an order. But I won't necessarily have to place an order for just one thread and then pay for shipping. Now I'm at the position where I can look at a glance in the four boxes, make a little list of anything where I think I'm starting to run a bit low. I can order five, six, seven skeins and actually make it worth my while for the shipping. So for me, this has just been like, you know, like, oh, at last, I've actually found a system that works with other systems and it works for me because I have other threads. And if you are a bobinator, if you love bobinated threads, the fact that Pip and Chip also do a bobinated version is great. It, it, the system works. It's so easy to see your bobbins without them sort of, you know, I mean, my draw has a habit. If I just try and pull one out, you know, 10 will come out by accident. And then I've got to sit there and try and reorder them all. But with this system, this system is just, it keeps everything nicely spaced so that it doesn't all sort of, you don't have to start sort of trying to sift through everything or moving things out the way to be able to see what you need to see. It is super, super clear. I cannot rave about this system enough. Um, I personally bought the full DMC set. I haven't quite got to actually filling all of the boxes up yet, but I am slowly but surely getting there. So the floss storage dilemma is over for me. Everything has a place. Everything has a system. Everything is organized finally. So my full DMC stash is now on the Pip and Chip floss chips in the four boxes. My CXC threads are in an IKEA drawer unit on the Annie's Keepers, along with all my specialty threads. So the CXC and specialty threads are on the Annie's Keepers and the full DMC is on the floss chips. So at last, everything is now hanging. I still do have bobinated threads. I must be honest with you, although I should go to that so that I can get rid of it, I haven't. And at some point I may have to bite the bullet and start ironing the threads and putting them onto the hanging system, but I'm not quite there yet. I haven't found enough time in my life to do that. Even after all this time of being laid up with a hip replacement, I still didn't have the time to do it. So my floss chip system isn't fully up and running just yet. I'm about halfway through. I've got about another half to go. And then I can say that I have a full DMC set that are in my floss chip system. But yeah, for me, the dilemma is no longer there. 
everything has a place, everything is organised, everything is handy, everything is happy, including me. So yeah, I mean, I, this was just my thoughts and views. That doesn't mean that it's going to work for everyone. Like I said at the very beginning, what works for one person won't work for another. It's very much based on how you stitch, what you stitch, what storage space you have, uh, and what your own natural preference is. But for me, hanging is definitely the way. Bobinating for me was just far too time consuming and came with so many problems and so many errors. I've now managed to find ways of storing all of my hanging thread in a smaller amount of space than I could for the, my DMCs, given that I really didn't like the winding and unwinding of bobbins. So there you go, that was just my thoughts and views.